Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. This is The Secret Show. This is episode number 249. I'm Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent is here too. And Mark is wearing a hat. I'm not, but Mark is. <laughs> I am I am wearing uh, some more swag. Yes. I know that I used to say swag and I still like it better as a word. I think it's swag. S-W-A-G. I, I know. I know it is. But swag, doesn't it sound a little classy? No, swag sounds like a grocery store in the deep south called Schwegmans. <laughs> Schwegmans? Yeah, seriously, there is one. When I lived in New Orleans, Louisiana for a while in the late 90s, and then I moved back there again. Yeah, hard to explain anyway. I lived there a couple different times, moving back and forth from Texas. But anyway, yeah, there was a grocery store called Schwegmans. Local store. Speaking of Texas, uh, you know what? These cords are going to drive me nuts, but that's okay. Uh, speaking of Texas, do you know? Are notice you wearing a red head? Head? I am wearing red a red hand shirt? shirt given to me by Matt Long. Flatworth is the name of Matt Long. Flatworth. Channel. Yeah, yeah. I watched his interview that he did with a local university thing just recently. Yep, I shared it. It's on my Facebook and my community Facebook and my Twitter in case anybody I, follows me. I was wondering, where, two questions. One, was he mic'd up? And two, where was that camera placed? Was it like at the bottom of his ceiling fan? Yeah, it seemed, it <laughs> at least the ceiling fan wasn't turned on. No, it was a it was a bird's eye view of the interview. It was kind of cool. Was, was, was it his place or was it somewhere else? I have no idea. Because I wouldn't believe that he would have a giant concrete pillar in the corner of his place plus there was a little display plaque on the on the stand next to the couch you were doing a lot of investigating i was well to the, you know, uh, video again i'm I... <laughs> you know what you're a conspiracy person and that's what we do right i mean no. we're we're watching a video but we're also looking behind like how many pictures does she have behind her i was uh, i wait, was wait that's in the shape of a star of david busted <laughs> I was critiquing his interview. I was reading her body language, but then I started looking around the room and I'm going, okay, because I initially thought it was his place. I was going, oh, it's kind of sparse, but yet modern. Had had kind of a feel. Well, for Matt him. Long would have a sparse yet modern place, wouldn't he? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But the concrete thing was out of, I was going, okay, the concrete thing was bothering me because that looked industrial, like educational, like maybe he was shooting, they were shooting at the school that was interviewing him. Interesting. You know, like she just got out of class. And well, now you forced me to put that in the description box of this video, which Sorry. I should do <laughs> after the show is over. No, no, it's not. It's not a bad interview. He does. He does well. Uh, you know, he hasn't done a lot of interviews, but he does well. And considering he had no notes, you were just going for a he's couple a really hours. He's a cool guy, and yeah. he's very uh, nice, intelligent, very creative, very interested in pushing flat Earth forward. And his name right. is Matt Long, and he was at the. Uh, Canada conference and he's done other things, but also his channel is called Flatworth because right. he lives in Fort Worth, Texas. Right. So and he's that'll gonna be, be in the description box. And if I'm not mistaken, he's you know, I didn't even look. I'm embarrassed. Is he speaking at the Denver conference? He should be, but I really don't know. I think he is. We should know these things. We should know these things. Why don't you get I was your told, people? I just found out what the schedule was. To tell my people. Last night. But I mean, it's been months. But we, we were going to be talking about this off and on now right, for, right. for the next couple of months. Oh, by the way, next week, we should probably pencil this in. Next mm -hmm. week on this show, we should probably start gathering categories for the Flat Earth, Flatties Award. Because mm -hmm. next week will be September. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, maybe. I'm maybe. not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe. 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 Yeah, maybe. Maybe. What, Don't something, know. You and, something you and I are talking about off air? Yeah, we'll talk about it. We'll figure it out anyway. Yeah. Oh, okay. We'll, I'm not sure. Hey. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was expecting a more enthusiastic response than that. I would before. love to, Mark. Let's plan on that. Okay. Let's do that. And then off air, it's like, no, we can't. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I hate you. Don't bring up things we haven't pre-discussed. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. No, the, the conference is a is a is a big big thing, and I'm. No, I'm to make super sure excited. No details are overlooked. Anyway, I know you have stuff on your piece of paper. Well, I do, you? and I don't have a piece of paper. I have it on my phone. Actually, oh. I've given up all writing utensils and pieces of paper because it's killing trees and and 
I lose pens and no, I just use my phone oftentimes as a notepad. And mm -hmm. I do want to bring people's attention to a channel that I didn't know about until today. And I know by looking at the comment section and looking at how many subscribers this man has that a lot of you do know about him. But in case you don't, the channel to subscribe to is Zoom Truth. That's Z O O M truth zoom truth um he goes out and he flat smacks people he does street activism and i know there's many people who do street activism but i just found this guy and he was in jersey on the boardwalk uh friday august 24th and he was basically uh red pilling people and doing it very successfully and also dropping in other bits of information about other things he was talking about the fact that he's doing a water fast soon and I mean, this guy is awake, awake, awake. Even if you're not into water fasting or any of that stuff, this guy is um, not just, I'm a flat earther, but he's like many of us. We have many aspects and components and facets to the things we're interested in. And he's putting it all out there. And people, well, some of them are laughing and walking away, but there are some who are transfixed, who are staying, who are picking up some of the, um, the materials that he provides for people to take away with them. And they're listening to him. And I know for sure he's got to be converting people. So he needs your support. And the way you can do that is subscribe and comment, Zoom truth and i will put that in the description box of this video cool um other activism ish or activism-esque things um everybody knows about uh john smith uh globe lie the channel and um John Smith Globe Lie is the name of the UK channel, but his name is Harry, and he teams up with many of the people in the UK, and they go to Speaker's Corner. I've uh, interviewed Roxanne Glenn before on this show, and, well, you guys know about uh, John Smith Globe Lie. But Roxanne, or Roxanne F.E., or Roxanne Glenn, she's got several different channels, and John Smith Globe Lie, and other people have put up a video called Globe Lie UK and Ireland Tour, and the friends of John Smith have put together a, well, they're, they're trying to gift John Smith, Harry, in thanks for all of the activism that he does by getting money together, not to give him money, but to buy more stuff, more banners, maybe even rent a camper van so he can go to Ireland and Scotland and other places in England and do street activism. So, if you want to contribute, and I did, just uh, go to the description box of this video. I put the link to one of the many uh, mirrors of this video that talks about what I'm telling you about, that they're getting money together and why they're getting money together. Now, you know, there's a, there's a thing within Flat Earth that we collectively shame anybody who's uh, getting money together for anything because there have been a few people who have got money together for things. Neither that thing didn't happen, it didn't happen as they said it was going to happen, or something mysteriously happened where that person disappeared. Yeah, that's a rare thing. It does happen, but no one's forcing you to donate. If you watch the video and you think it's a good idea and you want to help out the people in the UK who are doing the flat smacking, feel free to donate, and I did myself today. So I wouldn't donate unless I thought it was a really good idea. Except for that one time, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> no, we won't. Anyway, um, I do want to thank uh, Five Art Artes Liberalis, who has made the thumbnail for this video. And I think that's all the housekeeping, as Nathan Oakley calls it when he does his uh, Flat Earth Debates, the opening to his show. That's all the housekeeping that I've got for now. You have mm. anything? Uh, no. All right, then. No, no I don't. See you later, everyone. Great Good show. night, everybody. <laughs> um, let me go in the live chat, which is always fun. It's moving pretty fast. By the way, thanks to all the moderators who are here. And I hope uh, Cammie and her surgery that she had on one of her eyes is in full recovery effect, as far as I know she is, because she's in the live chat. And she may have an eye patch on. I don't know. but <laughs> Is she a pirate? Erg. Um, I do want to also say congratulations. You may not know uh, the person I'm about to talk about, but then and you may. Uh, Netta Hagler, H-A-G-L-E-R. She and her partner, Jess, just had a baby. Ned is a flat earther, and I'm sure Jess is too, and uh, Jess just gave birth. And I was reading a Facebook post. You and I have met Netta, of course, Mark, and mm -hmm. a lot of the people who are part of the LA, LA crew <laughs> represent. Is there an LA crew sign or just this flat earth sign? <laughs> Peace. Word. 
LA, I don't know. LA anyway. represent. <laughs> anyway, uh, we've met Netta before and Netta's brother and any, everybody there. Right. And anyway, the Facebook post came out today from Netta. And it says, yesterday we came to the hospital because Jess insisted she was in labor. I didn't believe it because the contractions weren't enough to stop her from making me stop for a large chili cheese fry. Well, she really was in labor. I've never seen something more beautiful in my entire life. 10 minutes of her pushing like a champ for my whole world to change. She did an amazing job. And the way she grabbed the baby when she came out was the best thing. Like every minute of the last nine months were worth that very second. And I saw a love in her eyes I have never before seen. And just like that, our lives are changed. We love you, baby girl. So once again, congratulations to Jess and Netta and their brand new baby girl, a flat earth baby. Another flat earth baby on the plane. Yay. Yay, Flat Earth Babies. <laughs> make, make sure you don't eat it right away. Save it for a special occasion. <laughs> no, chili cheese fries seem to be the uh, the food of choice in that family at this point. Can you imagine pregnant mom just being a pregnant mom saying, you know what, I think I'm having some contractions, but before we head to the hospital, let me get a chili cheese fry. <laughs> I mean, cravings are cravings. That's true. What can you do? <laughs> Pickles and ice cream. Did women really ever used to crave pickles and ice cream back in the day I, I i believe so yes it is a thing that people talk about yeah well, well women i, I th see i think it's just amplified women get tastes for things whereas men get a hankering for something they want to eat a, a lot of, <laughs> they want to eat a lot of something where right. women will all of a sudden i need something salty i need something sweet you know something bitter you know all, all this other stuff and when I think pregnancy just amplifies that, it's like, now you need half a jar of pickles and a thing of Hagen dazs right now. Well, there are food combinations that I truly believe a pregnant woman or maybe a pregnant man came up with. One of those things would be pizza with pineapple on it. I just don't get it. Uh, it's one of those it's, things. It's a, salty, it's a salty sweet thing. It's not I mean, I, Well, remember the, the traditional, and you remember this from the 70s, not that you're that old. Mm -hmm. uh was canadian bacon and pineapple that was a thing yeah, in the yeah. 70s. canadian yeah. bacon and pineapple pizza that, it, i never got it i never understood that really? it was well because you didn't well were you a vegan back then yeah i was often on vegetarian vegetarian since i was 15 but my mother told me that the, she would make special cured, food for me because i would die but she was wrong i'm the still cu here the cured meat in combination with the little pineapple chunks were quite tasty but That's after a while thing. you get sick of the pineapples so you just start flicking them off doesn't sound good to me at all. I don't really understand peanut butter and bananas, and I certainly do not understand at all the existence of sun-dried tomatoes. Just sounds gross to me. I've had them. Not a fan. Really? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah you're right. It is more of an acquired taste. Mm. Right we've got people in the chat. See, we've people say that <laughs> we never talk about flat earth, but the chat too. Look. Pineapple pizza, Canadian bacon, BLTs, <laughs> jalapenos. We are, are going to go off road from time to time. We do. We do a lot of off road in here. Yeah. We certainly do. We come back eventually. Yeah, we do. We always bring it around home. <laughs> kind of have to because we're on the road yelling at right. us. Right. And also, the show is called Flat Earth and other hot pizzas. So. Yeah. Other so Might as well just Fill be in the blank. Earth, flat Earth and other topics, really. <laughs> well, it is. That's what hot potatoes means. Topics that are too hot to handle. And I'm not talking about pizza, but, you know, if we talk about chemtrails or mentioned oh, yeah, water yeah, fasting yeah. earlier or uh, fill in the blank of the thing that if you bring it up around normal people, they'll say, oh, uh, do we have to talk about that? Or, you know, they'll be angry, one of the two, sometimes even both at the same time. So uh, uh, where did you acquire that lovely hat, by the way? Was it off the set of What's Happening? <laughs> exactly. Did, did well, you actually get it from Rerun? Remember the song Raspberry Beret by Prince? Yes, I do. Well, it was first called Blueberry Beret, but they didn't like <laughs> the way that it worked, and so they got rid of the hat prop, and Prince gave it to me, and now I'm wearing it. That is a wonderful impromptu. Really? That that was Blueberry Beret. Seriously, <laughs> that's how it was originally originally written. And you, wait a minute, but that's not even really a beret, is it? Not really, it's, but no, it's the uh, best I could come up with. You're not supposed to notice that. <laughs> what? No, it's a cool hat. I mean, it's shiny. It's blue. It, it, it's it looks, velvet, which it is looks, the best part. I, I'm about to say it looks very soft. Is that authentic velvet? 
Um, well, I don't know what that actually means, but yeah, there's velvet that's made of silk and it's not that because I'm vegan and we're not into the silk thing because it's actually worms boiled alive for those who know mm. or don't know. Um, but yeah, it's very soft and velvety. Gotta love velvet. But there's a lot of people, and I've read this online, that they can't even touch velvet. It gives them the heebie-jeebies. By, by the way, I have, them to, out. I have to read a comment by Nathan Oakley. Is Mark really raising his eyebrows at Patricia's hat? <laughs> yeah, you know what? I have, I have, I have completely forgotten until so I looked at the monitor just now. I have no reason to talk about anybody's, <laughs> right, anybody's headgear at all. Nathan am... continues. Does Mark know he has electricity flowing? Has <laughs> he forgotten? <laughs> You've got no place to talk, young man. <laughs> What's that buzzing sound? <laughs> no, no, I am wearing a uh, authentic Chris Pontius, and, and you notice the top part is is off, off of this hat. Wait a minute, there I knew it to, looked there different. Used be, there used to be a top part on top. Right, it's and better Chris, now. Chris actually wrote me. He goes, you know what? I don't like the top part. He well, goes, he goes, clip the, it off. The top part, and you can go back one. One episode and see it Last um, reminded me of a beanie, a spinning beanie, you know. The, yeah, it did. And I'm like, yeah, no, not so much. <laughs> it did. I'm still thinking, I know Chris wants me to keep it, but I'm still thinking of giving this away to some kid at the uh, and probably some adult will get it uh, at the uh, at the conference. Well, the thing is, is that you do that. People give you gifts and then you pass them along. I, I do do the same I thing. I, I'll wear them, but I mean, I can't right. wear them forever. I get so much stuff. Mm -hmm. that I eventually have to have to move on to other things but it's it's there for posterity on video yep and so, it's cool but I will, I will I will keep wearing this until I notice the chat isn't really going af after me no that happened last week uh if, if you know and uh I heard Eric Dubay somewhere no I didn't hear him say it somebody told me Eric Dubay ripped into you somewhere about the hat yeah, and said you were doing it to make flat Earth look ridiculous. Oh yeah, that's exactly what Mark's that's doing. That's what I that's do. It. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I I would have thought my speech. Mark's I being Mark, just like I'm being me, and just like you watching or being you. Any one of us put under the microscope, we could be laughed at or we could be praised. I mean, so, it's the way life is. So get over it. So he isn't, and I'll I'll end it at this. So he isn't going to give me any props for my testament at Edmonton at the conference. I have no idea. But he's going to make fun of the hat, there are even though this, this, that no this matter is what you do right here. Um, you, well, I mean, you'll get the media cameras on you with that, but then there will be some people say it looks ridiculous. Well, OK, whatever. In general, to uh, an outsider who has never heard about Flat Earth, the idea sounds ridiculous from the jump. All of us thought it was ridiculous at first, or at least we thought it's odd until we looked into it. But. Arwen says the hat is distracting and gimmicky, but as a design, it's good. It's like a party DJ prop. I mean, exactly. I think of it more like that. And I wouldn't personally wear it, but then you wouldn't personally wear this. This mm. hat could make Flutter look ridiculous, or my hair, yeah, or my face, you. or my microphone, or you're, any one of us. You're definitely the straight man in this team. Uh, well, you you are Dean Martin. Don't I, say I'm a man because that gets a whole other. Fine. You are Deanna Martin, <laughs> I am straight, and I am though. and I am Jerry Lewis. That's <laughs> that's Deanna Martin. Well, Deanna D Dean Martin didn't really drink that much, so maybe that would be me. Yeah, but he always held a glass. Right. That's the, that was his, you know, always a glass with clinkly ice. We should have um had a drinking show today. That no, was... no, I've I've drank for the last couple of days. Did you really? Why? What are you trying um, to forget? No, no, I just I just felt like the hat. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I I I I had a couple of glasses of wine for last night's show, and then I went to a party at my sister's the night before that, and I did uh, something else before that, and so yeah, I was no, this would probably not have helped me. I'm actually thinking about doing a water fast for a couple of weeks. Really? Speaking of drinking, yes. Well, I've been looking into it, it yeah. and um, I don't think there's anything dangerous about it. There have been people that have gone several months, and I don't think that I am ready for that. Hmm. But a couple of weeks I might be ready for. And so I'm going to do it. I'll let you know, All those right. who are watching, how it goes. It's basically just drinking water and not eating food for a little while. And um, all you need to do is if you don't feel well, is eat food. So it's not, you know, <laughs> I'm doing a heroin fast or something <laughs> as dangerous like that. <laughs> heroin fast. Well, you, you don't know. really have to do a fast when you're doing heroin. It pretty Wait. much comes naturally. True. It's like, um, <laughs> it's like doing a meth diet. 
Um, Jason of the Disbury family, hello, says three weeks for me. So um, people do this. Um, re recipes finum, gosh, I hope I'm getting that right, says good luck fasting. And um, anybody else have uh, uh, any sort of fasting stuff? Uh, Arwen is, says, says don't drink distilled water during fasting. <laughs> Brian Stapley says that last heroin fast didn't work out too well. <laughs> Oh, no. no, it never does. <laughs> no, it never does. <laughs> hey, um, there was quite a few people, by the way, sent me. I don't know if you saw it because you, you and I haven't talked a little that much over the last week. Wait, I have to interrupt you only because somebody is asking, named at, somebody is asking, do you or I wear Converse high tops and what size? Uh, I wear them. If I wore Converse high tops, I'd never really have. I was not a big fan of the, the canvas basketball shoe, I was a big fan of Adidas and. Uh, Nike, but I wear a size 13. I wear size men's six and a half or seven because they come in men's sizes only if, well, maybe there's women's, but I have a man's size six and, and a half. And you have uh, su surprisingly long feet. For, I do. Well, for your height my hands, you know, and your hands. But there's still, uh, there are a woman's size eight and a half or nine. So mm. any, in, in American, but that's and, not true because and, I have some shoes that are size eight and a half, but women understand this like mm -hmm. jeans. You can have many different sizes of jeans and it's not fat or thin. It's just right. different manufacturers. And with shoes, it's the same thing. I've got size eight and a half women's shoes in the U S women's, um, nine, uh, you know, eight, um, it's random because the brand and how they fit and what kind of, if it's a boot or whatever, anyway. Uh, well, I see there's some heavy trolling going on in the uh, hey, chat right now. Nice. Time we got some trolling. Yeah, and you know what that means? It means people coming back with multiple stock accounts giving the video a thumbs down. So if you're watching it now, give it a thumbs up. But in the end, it doesn't matter because it's all and, engagement. And yet I don't give thumbs down to like say this video that was sent to me multiple times. Flatter you don't than give thumbs down to anyone. And you've told me it's just not good karma. It's not good karma. And which is why, like, for example, when I watched Flat Earth and Geocentrism by Creation Ministries International, mm -hmm. I listened to the whole thing, hour long of him at the pulpit talking to his congregation mm -hmm. about how Flat Earth is, is, you know, ridiculous and blah, 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 and all this stuff. And he, you could tell after a while, he, he's a secret scientist dressed in pastor's clothing. That's, that's all he is. And is that like a wolf in sheep's clothing? Kind of. I mm -hmm. mean, he's a he's a science lover, and I, I'm not going to fault him necessarily for that, but come on, be a little open-minded. Quote some chapter and verse, and which he really, really didn't do. And I thought, anyway, if you haven't checked it out, it's got a couple thousand hits already. Have you, you watched any of that? You know which one no, I'm talking about? No, I haven't. Mm -mm. Uh, you ought to take a look. All you do is type in Flat Earth, sort by the week, and it's in the top five or six called flat earth and geocentrism this really is a gospel issue with uh what's his name again dr rob carter so he's anti-flat earth anti-flat earth and pro christian okay and he's defending it he's he's but he's he's defending it differently most of your pastors that'll go out against flat earth they'll hang on to isaiah 40 22 and they'll hang on to just a handful of bible verses because they're scared about you know the congregation you know turning on them in or his case, they just don't believe it's true i mean it could be that uh, that that in his case yeah i i think you're right there where he's really he's he's got one foot in the bible and one foot in science and he's holding he's holding fast to to both and it's it's not necessarily infuriating but you want to see what we're what we're up against on the on the religious side of things that's a, a good guy to look at there are people who are highly critical of flat earth who are on the outside, meaning they're so on the outside. I would consider them to be atheists and right. uh, they're science people or just general um, regular people like your neighbor or something. Right. They'll say right away, oh, it's a Christian thing. Flat earth is a Christian thing. Or, or you have to be religious to be a flat earther, which is so untrue. And this is another example of that. This particular pastor slash scientist is a Christian, and yet he's not a flat earther. So yeah. I really hate those generalizations that flat earthers have to be fill in the blank. We're everywhere. We're everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we cover all demographics. Mm -hmm. uh, flat Earth does not care about gender or race or religious preference. Flat Earth welcomes all. Indeed.
Mm. Um, Nora, no one's flower, is on a ferry now, and she says she's on the Irish Sea in a large boat presently. So maybe this is the very first time the secret show has been heard on the sea, on the high seas. Is that where she is? On the Irish Sea? <laughs> That's pretty good. Is that what she's thinking? But she herself doesn't have a traditional Irish accent because she's an American that happens oh, to be in Ireland. Yeah. You've oh. met her before. She's got long red hair. Nora, no one's flower. Oh. Uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, I want to say hi to Mikey Smith, who I met at the conference in Canada. Boy, there's two conferences we've got under our belts now. I mean, there's been another conference in, in Europe but previously. But and in, South Korea. In, yes, in South Korea. And, uh, you know. And New Zealand. Oh my gosh, New Zealand too. Yeah. So although that one was more of a pub <laughs> thing, than, well, I, and I appreciate it. I again love the fact that in New Zealand they held their little conference at a at a bar. We've got Bob Larkin in the live chat saying, "Hey Patricia, I've got my first smart TV, so I have you both on my forty inch TV. So much better than watching you oh, on my iPhone." Good lord! Uh oh, yeah, <laughs> I better move back. Now the monsterism. <laughs> <laughs> All of us. Great. So when the kids are like pointing and laughing and thinking I'm a cartoon character. Yeah. Well, they're just, we'll be laughing at the hat. Maybe mine. <laughs> Maybe not yours. <laughs> no, no, that would definitely be laughing at mine. I mean, I'm, if I could be, if I was any more electric, I'd be Robert Redford in the Electric Horseman right now. Very interesting. Um, I think it's cool. It's just you. It's just you. And I don't mind. I embrace it. I, you and, and like, I didn't come up with this stuff. <laughs> this stuff is given to me. You know this, how people say you're dorky and some people think that's an insult? Mm -hmm. Be something that you would say, yes, that is indeed true. Oh, I'm dorkalicious. So oh, yeah. it is, it goes with you. It's fine. It's fantastic. I'm nerdtastic. <laughs> nerdtastic. Geek O Rama. <laughs> um, Brian Stavely says, Mark, you'd be Raiden from MK. <laughs> Wow. Okay. That's a gamer reference. Yes. Raiden Mortal Kombat. Uh, I don't know if I'd be Raiden, but thank you. I, I really didn't play a lot of Mortal Kombat. Platter Subgenius Society says, I look like a train operator with that hat on. <laughs> That's Ooh. what it is. It is kind of a it's train. It's a trainman hat. Or like a cabbie hat, an old style cabbie it's, hat. It's a cross between a trainman hat and a pimp. Yeah, that's yeah. me, all right. We're train I'm pimp. I'm pimping, I'm pimping out the flat earth on a train. Um, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get in trouble if we don't stop. Um, uh, um, Tina Walker, who says, Dorkalicious. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, Armin week? says, you need a Nintendo 3D Game Boy for some reason. Eh, I'm perfectly happy. I still play Warcraft, guys. Just so you know, 14 years later, and I don't really have time for much else. It's flat earth, a little bit of gaming, and that's what I do. You yeah. know, Nathan Oakley says that he thinks that you've lost weight. Have you lost weight? I haven't been on a scale, so if I have lost but weight, hopefully it's nothing. Remember when I saw you, I think it was in Los Angeles, and I said, you're looking really fit. Didn't I say that? That's because I was in a towel and I was giving you two tickets to <laughs> and the you gun. Were in. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you were. I mean, and I, I well, thank you. Sorry. And I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, who, who knows? Maybe, maybe my body's going through changes. I don't know. I my workout routine really hasn't changed much. Mm -hmm. uh, but thank you for anyone that says that I'm losing weight and or looking fit. So, you are. Thank you. Thank you. Ute says the globe has lost weight, muscle mass. <laughs> it has. Good. Ridgeview says you do look better. Interesting. I, uh, I don't oh, know what that is. Compliment Mark more. I think, like, yeah, no, no, don't, don't do that. I'm <laughs> believe me. Part of my allure is my dorkaliciousness. Right. So uh, if it I brings all that, the ladies to the yard. It's like if Shrek lost weight. What happens then? He's just. It's like, oh yeah, Shrek looks more fit, but then he doesn't have that that same sort of appeal. That, that Shrekishness. Yeah. So maybe I should have uh, have like a butter sandwich later. No, don't. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Uh, hello, Zoe. Be here in love, and Anthony Riley and Johanna Richmond, who says lose the hat with the weight. I remember Johanna Richmond last week making comments that were 
not too nice. So hey, the we'll hat wait works. around and the hat see if Johanna makes a neutral comment or engages with the chat or anything else that would be, you know. Oh, that's mean. Too bad you can't lose ugly, Mark. Thanks. That's glaucoma, not glaucoma. That that's, that's not very nice. You can excuse yourself from the hangout and give it a thumbs down on the way out. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> somebody, 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 somebody put a wrench on that guy. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a great idea. <laughs> I'm waiting to say that in real life. <laughs> somebody blue wrench that guy over there. Everyone's saying crazy stuff. M and K says steer. You you look like a conductor for the Smurfs. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Nice. Johanna Richmond says, Hey, I'm teasing you. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Um, hi you to Flat Earth Music or Flat Accord Music. Maybe I said that already. Glaucoma says he's joking too. So there you know, we haven't even really had hecklers with the uh, in in the conferences either. No, everybody's uh, been nice. We've had absolutely no uh trouble at either of the two conferences no. well there was a tiny bit of trouble at the first conference yeah but, but Raleigh, that was one but, of ours yeah that, but that was, wasn't that even was trouble uh yeah that was just a flat earther and maybe those of you who are watching this know who just wasn't happy that this particular yeah. uh session was a christian um a christian yeah. minister was doing it and she was saying hey what about other religions and what about other beliefs which you know whatever fine right. But there was nobody there um, trying to tear down any any of no, us or anything. No. Or hey, uh, I think that when trolls show up, th there's just this overwhelming sense of community in, in Flat Earth that it's tough. It's tough to get any sort of head of steam exactly. to, to go against them. I mean, look at the, the little person in the globe. It's it like, like the that. sharks and the jets, except we're the jets and the trolls are the sharks and there's really only one of them and there's thousands of us and we all turn around in unison and say you're talking to me and they're like wow oh, okay no. so you're gonna <laughs> mix <laughs> west side story with taxi driver just then just like that gonna... <laughs> yeah, well why not <laughs> <laughs> i mean wow. we've got smurfs and prince and on my head so <laughs> we're just gonna mix it up here uh, that's good the, the, <laughs> anyone hasn't seen west side story i highly recommend one of the best musicals of all time i don't really like musicals but i like that is there any other musical that you like i love uh, the sound of music yeah, you like up. actual full-blown musicals sure sound uh, of music and i love mary poppins saw like, a chorus uh, line in new york i uh, never saw that didn't interest back me. back in the day uh i saw once upon a mattress with Sarah Jessica Parker and it was an accident. I was invited there by a friend of mine in New York mm -hmm. and we got there and it was closing night. And I was in like second row center as and you know people were giving her flowers and I was going, "What? What ha what's happening here? I'd never been to a, a closing night on Broadway." And Interesting. So, so yeah, I I like a few musicals, sure. Ridgeview says I love West Side Story. My mom loved West Side Story too, so uh, everyone now is talking about musicals. <laughs> you know what? The chat is really nice here because this show, for those who don't know and just stumbled upon us, um, is really a Flat Earth Insider show. It's I, when you're already there. It's not Flat Earth. Uh, we're going to teach you how the Earth's flat. It's I, not roofs. It's just let's gather around the campfire, as Uptina Walker once uh, famously said, and we still carry on with that now. I gather around the campfire and hang out together and chat. That's it. I have I have to mention real quick uh, Ghostbusters because you mentioned that South Park bigger longer uncut. Mm -hmm. Why would he mention that? Because the only South Park movie was a musical. Trey Parker, a musical genius by by anybody's standards, uh, he actually disguised the South Park movie. It was a musical. It had multiple beautiful songs. One of them was nominated for an Academy Award. Blame Canada, and it was it was pure genius. It, it is a I. I can't say enough about that about that movie because it was and it was it worked on multiple levels. You never saw it. <laughs> no, I never did. Yeah, if you see it, you'll you'll know what I mean. It's like why is there so much singing? And it's because Trey Parker, that's his his forte. I mean, he also wrote. Remember, he used his South Park money to finance the Book of Mormon, which I think is still on Broadway right now. Well, um, Flat Earth Subgenius Society says South Park the movie is a mu musical, one of the best movies of all time, best show on TV. And what year was it? Your favorite year for stuff? 1999. Yeah, that's best your year favorite. in movies. Um, 
my sister and I, when we were young, because musicals during my youth, you know, in the seventies, I mean, I, Mary Poppins, like I was mentioning earlier, um, my sister and I went through a period of time when we were playing, um, we would, uh, sing whatever we needed to say to each other. Like I'm going upstairs to get a cookie. Like we would make our life into a musical. Really ridiculous. But because we were so influenced by watching musicals, hmm. children's musicals anyway. So you don't sing as much now. No, but I do that with my sister sometimes when we hang out. <laughs> it's just somebody could just start doing that. And then it's like a fan. You know, we all have that in our family if we get along with our family. Those little things we do only with them. Well, right. in your case with your sister, try to kill her. Yeah. <laughs> Sneaking up on her with a knife. Here, whatever. <laughs> She's no. like, oh, you nut. <laughs> Put that knife down or I'll shoot you. <laughs> right. It's oh, like you. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, but siblings. <laughs> Another track. All right. What else do I need to talk about that I need to remember before we continue going into crazy tangents? Uh, if you're still looking, I should mention that Joe Rogan got back into it recently. Uh, you, can, yes. you can see that he on JR, he's one of his, he's got multiple channels, and one of his channels is called JR Eclipse. And he kind of reposted, I think he re edited and reposted something called Joe Rogan, Neil deGrasse Tyson on Eric DeBay and Flat Earth. That is cool. And what is it about? I mean, what does he talk about? Uh, just the debate that never happened. I think Joe Rogan was pissed that the debate member, he, he wanted Neil to be to do a debate. And Neil's like, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. We'll do that. And then you knew full well that Neil was going to blow him off later. And he did. But but Joe was optimistic enough that he actually put uh, Neil on the schedule against Eric Dubay and it never, ever materialized. Hmm. So. so what's the reason that that never happened? Do you think we don't know for sure? Oh, because we're... because Neil doesn't do interviews. Or, I'm sorry, he doesn't yeah, do he doesn't do debates. Okay, but I I'm not going to schedule a, my a, a debate with somebody. I don't even schedule a show with somebody without actually talking to them you, first if, and having them say yes. If he's been on your show enough times, maybe you could put the pressure on him. Maybe it's like, well, I've already booked you, you know. And it was like, all right, fine. That seems very unprofessional. Well. I don't think it's a it's a question of, of professionalism. He just he just took the chance and it bombed on him because he doesn't realize. I mean, Neil's gone on several times says I don't do debates. That's not his role. He is a man with a microphone. He does speeches and then he puts the mic down and he leaves. He is a jack in the box for science. That's all he is. Science has a lot of those, don't they? Mm, they've got one in every region. Right. They've got over here. They've got uh, Neil. Uh, Michio Kaku kind of bridges the gap in the whole Asian thing. You got Brian Cox in the Europe side, and then the roaming idiot that is, and I shouldn't say that, that's not nice, which is Bill Nye, the science lie. See, I don't know if these people are indeed purposely lying, and I still don't know yet, or they are just um, compartmentalized so badly and so indoctrinated with their education or... Um, in in some cases, it's not as much education as just their jobs, that uh, they're just basically brainwashed. I'm not sure which one it is, and I'm going to go with they don't know. I'm going to go. With they don't them. know. Do you, you don't. You don't have to have them know. Why, that doesn't why, make why, them good people or anything. No. It just makes them. You know, no, and which is one of my things that I throw at astronauts when they say, "Are you telling me?" Because I've gotten this question multiple astronauts times. Astronauts have got to be lying, unless there's well, some they, kind they of. They are uh, lying, but into brainwashing. What, they to go through a, like literal brainwashing where they like no, them or something. It's again, if it's compartmentalized, how much are you lying if you don't know the whole picture? Meaning, it's like oh, we're only going to tell you so much. That way, if you're tortured, you don't know. You know that old that old line. So in their case, yeah, they know they're lying, but they don't know the scope of what they're lying about. They're well, just that following. wouldn't fly. That wouldn't fly even in an interpersonal relationship. Um, if somebody's well, eating or not, I mean, it's like it, if you just picked up some chick in the bar and had sex with her, if you're a man and you're a married man, you come home and your wife said, "My best friend was at that bar and saw you go off with a woman to a hotel," um, and the guy's excuse is, "I didn't know her name. I don't have knowledge of her where she came, where she." Come, came from, so therefore wasn't cheating. It doesn't work. I, oh, all right, Let, let's think of it a little, little broader than that. Though. By the Let, way, it's not a good idea to use cheating spouse analogies. We've learned that from Jaron. He used to always use a cheating spouse analogy in everything that he would talk about when it came to flat earth, and that didn't work out. So, all right, how about this? We'll just broaden the scope. So, we'll use attorney's terms here. Let's say, for example, we're talking about human trafficking. 
and you're the drive, one of the drivers. All you do is you pick up and you drive people from point A to point B. You're now, guilty by association. Yeah, of course, of course you're guilty. No question. But how much are you culpable for? Meaning there's only so many charges they can throw at you because you only did a very specific job. So mm -hmm. since you literally didn't know and you didn't want to know, it's like, you know what? I just get paid to drive. I don't want to know anymore. That's that's all you're going to get hit for is, yeah, you're you're part of the, the, the bank robbery team or whatever you want to call it, but you're only guilty for what you know. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's wrong. But, <laughs> <laughs> that's why they call them ringleaders. The ringleaders are the ones that get pinned. Right. That's true. Well, no, so, I, oftentimes they they have the fall guy and the ringleader goes free. Yes, they do. I want to thank Earth is Seriously Flat for donating to the Super Chat, which I always forget I have Super Chat up, but I do have Super Chat. Critical thinking flat earthers is the message. And we have another Super Chat that came in earlier, and I've got to go find whose name that is. Oh, it won't let me because it's going off the screen. Oh, Just Jack. Hello, Just Jack. Just Jack. Uh, Just Jack Flat Earth says, get bold, get active, like John Smith, Globe, Too Lie, nice. Authentic Intent, Realm Walker, Flat Earth City, and Zoom, who I mentioned at the start of the show. Want to do it from home? Check out Flat Smackers Live. Drive through grocery lines everywhere. Just Jack is correct. And I do love Flat Smackers with the Hori Sheet Show, or Hori Sheet as he goes by now. You got to watch that if you have a chance. He, it's amazing the way he's able to using his CGI green screen uh, ride in a Tesla and then present people with videos and get their take on what they're seeing. And he really can he can turn people. Sometimes not all of the time, but it, it happens, and it's it's great to to watch it happen before your very eyes. Yeah. So let's see what else is happening in our live chats. Um, shirtless flat earther, flat smacker bust. Nathan Fowler says, order a pizza. And when they ask for the name, say flat earther. Actually, I've done that with, uh, with coffee. When I ordered coffee at a, a coffee place, they ask for your name and I'll say flat earther. And then they have to yell out flat earther. <laughs> and it's not really flat smacking, but it's kind of a fun thing to do. Um, we've got, uh, peanuts Clark in here. Um, and what else? Uh, Anders Ace, hello. And uh, a bunch of other people here. Michael Cleary, hello. And I appreciate everyone being here. Um, hmm, there was something else. Oh, I wanted to talk about uh, D Marble a little bit. D Marble and other people have uh, discovered that. Remember the Discovery Channel? Discovery Channel? And it was a while ago, they came out with this thing that talked about, um, uh, uh, you know, the people that were defrauding and doing the video with, oh my gosh, I can't think of his name. He was in a wheelchair. He couldn't speak. You know, Stephen we, Hawking. Thank you, Stephen Hawking. Yes. You know the video where Stephen Hawking and then the helicopter and the various people proving the shape of the earth. Right. Well, one of the people is actually... A NASA scientist, the woman that operated the laser, Joy. The Asian woman? Joy, I, I can't, I, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. NG, That's okay. Joy NG, you know. But NG. she was a, she's a NASA employee? Yeah, she works mm -hmm. for NASA. I so, can see that. Um, this is something that D Marble uh, put it out. So, that was the Discovery Channel episode when they were trying to pretty much basically deceive us with lots of cuts and that kind of things. Oh, We've yeah. Got, it was a heavily mm -hmm. edited, heavily polished, dramatic music, mm -hmm. demographically mm -hmm. perfect little clip that didn't prove anything. Well, it did Modulate. prove that they're, you know, when you do see any group trying to manipulate with with uh, cutting th cutting the film and right. putting ob obviously a NASA scientist and pretending it's a regular person, they are proving something. They're proving that they're hiding something from us, the truth. Agreed. So basically that whole Discovery Channel thing is a flat earth proof when you think about it. Yeah. So we've got a bunch of people in our live chat talking about Jews and that's cool. Go ahead and do that if you want to do it. Um, I don't have any problem with you doing that. If that's your beliefs, feel free to express your beliefs. But um, 
someone in the live chat was saying, I don't talk about the Jew because I am one. Well, guess how people know I'm Jewish? First interview I ever did on your show and the first show I ever did on my channel, I talked about my mom was Jewish. Wait, you're- That's how people know. You're Jewish? Nothing I've ever hidden. I never practiced Judaism, but it's no, in my No, seriously. Heart. <laughs> so what I'm saying is um, nothing's wow. hidden here, including me and who I am. Always told everyone from the very beginning. So, uh, and you the reason I don't talk about the Holocaust and all of those things is because I understand the truth of that, or at least what I ascertain I, to be the I'm truth. Sorry, and I, I realize it won't help the situation that we're trying to do here. I know you won't because... And I leave that to other people to do and fully support them. It is your show. However, I do have a soapbox here. And as you know, I believe that if you are a true flat earther, if you are truly open-minded and accepting of others, that you do not pick on any demographic group. I agree. Be it uh, Jewish or black or gay or transgender or whatever it is, don't pick on them because we're all in the same boat. Yeah. That being said, that in no way diminishes my unquenchable hatred towards the Eskimos and the Sherpas of the Himalayas. Yeah. Those groups need to be eliminated. I know you think they're a nasty lot. Oh, just, oh. <laughs> Eskimos, this is the worst. Igloos are the worst. They just are. They're unsafe. It's unsafe housing. Harpoons, whale and it's blubber. And cold, too. Yep. <laughs> That whole Nanook thing, no, uh, I can see right through it. So what he's trying to say is... Don't, don't you're going <laughs> to pick on anyone, pick, no, and if you guys get that, it's meaning, does does my uh, un, unwavering hatred towards the Eskimos, does that have anything to do with Flat Earth? No, it doesn't. Uh, it is minor in the grand scheme of things. So I don't pick on any groups, I can't. I, it's hypocritical for me to do so. If you're not to that spot in your life yet, that's fine. But that's where I am and have been for some time. Right. And I don't blame any one group because I know people that are bad in every group, including flat earthers. And I know wonderful people in every group, including flat earthers. Right. So the whole hate thing, that is yeah. for the powers that should not be. Yeah. Us, we're all up against the same stuff. We've all got to pay taxes. We've all, we all have... Even if life can be really great, we all have an element of slavery involved in our life, and uh, we're all trying to fight the lies. So, that's are there about are there that. individuals that irritate me? Sure, sure. M Matt Long probably top of the list right now because <laughs> he's just he, too darn handsome and nice. He's too <laughs> attractive as a man. He bothers me. <laughs> Normally, guys that are that attractive are shorter. <laughs> he is not. <laughs> And kind of a jerk, and he's and not. kind of a jerk, and, <laughs> and you know, and they're atheists and all these other things. No, he seems to have the whole package. I hope he's ready for what happens going to happen to him at the conference. Denver. He's going to get mobbed. He's going to get mobbed. <laughs> There's going to be people hovering. They're going to be orbiting him. Anyway, I just encourage people not to generalize about others because yeah. you do not know their life. You don't know. You don't know. You do know things that you've read in history, and you do know because you're an open-minded person and you've done research that things as they've been presented probably are not true. However, that doesn't give you license to hate. There you go. All right. Treat moving on. Better than you treat yourself. <laughs> moving on. Moving on. Uh, all right. Where were we? What were uh, we talking about? We were talking about... Um, I was going to make up something, but I decided uh, not to pick on you. Oh. There was a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, by the way, for everybody that's been... I've been getting a whole bunch of license plates recently. And in fact, I've got kind of a backlog. There was a really, really, really good license plate that you put up recently. And what was it? Eight no, per mile no squared. Sphere? Oh, yeah, that one. Was there no sphere as well? Yeah, no... Well, there was sky water. There's... there's hang on. There's variations of it. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, you know, the, the Americans and the Canadian... America and Canada, we can do vanity plates otherwise known as personalized license plates. And you can pick whatever you want in six letters, seven letters, or eight letters, depending on your state. You no, know, they used to call them vanity plates. In yeah, the that's what they were. And then they stopped and called them personalized plates. Kind of like Probably. global warming became chick yeah. 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, I caught that. And, uh, but yeah, they used to be vanity plates because only bit, you know, it started in California. It was, it was, but you're, you would have these plates for whatever. So if you, you hot ran, blondie and stuff like that, exactly. Or it could be a corporate guy, a president of a company. If you, my ran, dad had WKMI, which is radio there you go. radio you know, stations. If you ran a bread company, it'd be like bread and buns or whatever. <laughs> All sorts of bread and buns. <laughs> I don't even think that would work letter and space wise. Bread and buns. Actually, you could. Okay. B R E D N B U N S. You could. You could do it. Anyway, <laughs> so the, it's also oh. redundant. Because aren't buns bread? Well, sometimes they're bread. Yeah, sometimes they're so, flesh. Sometimes That's another story. They're, <laughs> they're flesh. Really? That's, I wouldn't have said that. Okay, well, I mean, so, like nice buns. You know. So but. the so the different license plates, for example, <laughs> this show is off the rails. Most people, <laughs> if they're going to choose a flat Earth license plate, and my car, I was the first one to get one with its flat. Oh, are you bragging now? I am. I am absolutely going to brag on this. I was the first one, and I had it for a full calendar year. And not only that, I had the blown up version behind me on this show for a year. Before somebody finally said, "Oh yeah, maybe I should do a flat Earth license plate," then was another guy in Montana that decided to do it, and now we've got just a slew. Of them. People are making up all sorts of stuff. So mine was "It's flat," seven letters, right? Mm -hmm. "It's flat." Other ones like "Flat Earth," F L A T R T H. Uh, yours is, hang on, it is. That's mine, the one you just read. No, yours is yeah, F L A T R T H. Other people can do F L T. RTH, uh, there's the creative ones though. The, the people have, um, let me see, yeah, FLT, ERTH, just fl like Matt Long, he's got just just flat, just four, four letters flat. Uh, the cool ones like Skywater, I thought that was kind of fun. You, did you get PEB flat? Did you get that one? PEB flat. No, what does that mean? Planet Earth B flat, yo. <laughs> no one will ever get that. No, they won't. <laughs> Peb flat. That it took me? that took me like a week. <laughs> I stared at this and go, what? And I think somebody had to tell me. Well, uh, it seems like if your plate can't be understood by the lowest common denominator, it's and, and to be what it means, then it probably doesn't make any sense. Uh, the California so plate flat. that I love the most was R W E flat. Are we flat? Uh, California also has Tis flat. That's a good one. Uh, that one's pretty good. Uh, flat Club, F L A T C L B. That's a really good one. That one's a really good one. That, probably my favorite because it's so original is got to be the one from uh, where is that one? Arizona eight eight p eight p miles square eight, eight p mile with a two next to it, so eight per mile squared. That's a really insidery one. That is an insidery one, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, but yeah, there's all sorts of fun. And of course, the guy that that hid I, it's flat. He mixed the letters up so it spells Filtast. <laughs> <laughs> That's a crazy one. <laughs> yeah, and he was at the he was at the Arcadia meetup. When there's we were very there. creative thinkers coming up with these plates, and or very drunk people. Yep, it be flat Missouri tis flat T I S F L T. Uh, lots of NASA lies, of course, mm -hmm. and I think that's all the different ones. Uh, but yeah, and the people just yeah, so get creative with it. You use numbers instead of letters. It doesn't matter if something's chosen. Uh, like uh, uh, Zulu One, he found out that it's flat was chosen, so he got the full blown version. It is flat. Cool. Because you can get that that many letters. And, yeah, just, you know, when your plate's ready to expire a little bit before, get a new plate. Get so, a plate. Not they're cheap. expensive, they're, by yeah, the way. They're not, they're not expensive anymore. They really aren't. Uh, I, I know that they, I think they used to be, but they were more of a pain in the ass than anything to do because you had to explain why, you know, when you, because everything's an abbreviation of something. And so you had to explain to make sure it wasn't inappropriate. Even back when I got my first personalized plate, which was back in 80... Eight, I think 87, 88. Uh, I because they give you three choices. Because and my first one, I think, was uh, Inferno for a whole nother reason. Uh, and the second <laughs> one was <laughs> second one, seriously, that was my first choice. Uh, second one was SGT. Did, were you thinking about getting the one Armageddon, please? <laughs> 
No. That go with Inferno? No. You just couldn't uh, figure out how to get the letters to work. My my third choice was Sergeant, and, I, and they gave me that one. Mm. The one I, I kind of regretted, although I think it would have gotten me in trouble, was Sarcasm, because it fit. Oh. Because then you get pulled over, you know, the cop just waiting for it. It's like, all right, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> just pull Freeman on them and uh, see yeah. how you do with that, with the Sarcasm plate. Otherwise, it might work. Right. The just um, just Jack made it. Yeah, you couldn't use F K N flat. Just Jack. Just so you know, you wouldn't be able to pull that off. Oh yeah, he's saying that that might work. Um, uh, what else if you could get past him, sure. Oh wait, wait. I have to mention this. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I want to say hi to Hangnail, who's been in here, and Nathan Fowler, and uh, um, Thomas Harlan as well, because names are scrolling by, and I want to say hi before I forget. Now, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, the, uh, it's it's interesting because uh, Robbie called me and there was a journalist from Canada because I, I don't know why, but some journalists have access to the Department of Licensing. Uh, uh, at least this girl was. I don't know why. Uh, who applies for what and was it accepted or denied for, for plates? And Flat Earth, F-L-A-T-R-T-H, something like that, mm -hmm. was declined for comp was it it was called something common sensibility clause common sensibility yeah i know right is that even a is that even a thing? thing yeah i know that seems like i that seems like a very well, what broad... about the globe there's no common sense there so and, and she was calling she was calling him because and I, I know i'm screwing up the story robbie uh but she was calling him because he's he she wanted to know were these plates accepted in the united states and she had seen the license plate collections that we had had down here. And he said, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we've never had any anybody, as far as I know, get declined in the States for just a gen generic flat earth thing. But up in Canada, yeah, they actually turned down one of those. And they've got quite a few plates that are um, that are tied to flat earth, but they don't have any FLT. They don't have any. They, they have it's flat, but they don't have flat earth. So in Canada, it'd be OK to get it. It's a globe plate. That would yeah. fit under common sensibility. I know, right? Because it's right. I know. So um, I, I, I hope she runs a little blurb on it. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah, because that's not fair. I know. Right. I know. I hope. I hope that whoever whoever got turned down, they don't give up and they they keep trying different different things. Authentic intent says breaking news: flat Earth hit on the head as disc golf doesn't see stars. That is Authentic Intent's video title of something he did recently, which is a great title that caught my attention. So, um, Corey Christopher says, hey, Marco Patricia, Flat Earth Builder here. Hello. Been squatching for the last eight months. That's Got Sasquatching, the by the way. of the hairy beast. Yeah. Wow, Corey. Are you going to make a video with him? I hope so. Yeah, Sasquatch is a big thing up here. Oh, In wow. fact, do you know where the, the highest concentration of sightings Doing this with the no hands, folks. Highest concentrating of Sasquatch sightings is actually up just north of here on Vancouver Island. Where I thought it was in the chat about 15 minutes or so ago when everyone was just being all rude. No, you know. <laughs> they got they 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 got banned and left. So it, most people think it's like Washington and Oregon, United States. No, it is mm -hmm. not. It is just north of here in uh, right across the border in Canada. Wow. Yeah, no, right? interesting. Now. It's like a Sasquatch, eh? I think it's possible for sure. What Sasquatch? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Right. I, you know, here's nothing here's, is impossible. No, nah, nothing. To what we are talking about. Look up something called the Billy Ape, B I L L Y Ape, which was discovered a few years back. I think I dated him. It is. <laughs> it's no good. <laughs> it's, Let me tell it, you. It's a six foot chimpanzee that is notorious. Like I said. <laughs> Like I said. <laughs> but um, shh. wait we have a giant sasquatch sighting right here <laughs> oh giant cat giant cat that's rory hi rory <laughs> the uh uh this billy ape is notoriously shy around humans and so it would avoid people at all costs i mean keep huge distances between them and only recently it's like oh yeah a whole nother species of chimpanzee six six feet tall so why not? Why not? Why not? Why not be a why? Why couldn't there be a northern ape out there 
that has some secret like Indian or I'm sorry, not Indian uh, elephant burial grounds, you know, where they 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 when they know that's their time, of course, you know, there's still be weird things like what if they fell off a rock or hit by lightning or something mm -hmm. like that? Wouldn't there be a body somewhere? I don't know. Kind of mixed. <laughs> Well, um, what about the Loch Ness Monster? I mean, that's kind of dinosaur-ish. Good point. But what about, does it mate? Uh, it would have to, to keep the species going as many years as people say they've seen one. Right. People generally don't say they've seen two, so what's no. up with that? Oh, no, I, I do believe in plesiosaurs. I absolutely do. Plesiosaurs, I, is that their name? Yeah, yeah, that, that'd be, because they've got the long ne neck and they have little flippers, four flippers, two in the front, oh. two, two in the back. And they would be, of course, science never, ever wants them to be discovered. That would be one of those things you would bury if you found out from a science standpoint, because it completely screws up the, the whole idea of carbon dating. And, and it was like, okay, didn't you say those things died out at least 100 million years ago? Then why are they swimming around over in the UK? Why, why are they over there? And what about um, there being a flat earth, but then things like dinosaurs still existing outside of the land that we know or sure. in some sort of underground area which would be like um, kind of a form of hollow earth as part of flat earth a subterranean area well yeah. then you're going straight into the journey to the center of the earth i you know, used to mo movies have been made those of old not the revised old journey of the center journey yeah, to the center of the earth movies oh my gosh I, I really enjoyed them too. Yeah, because when you're a kid watching those, it's like, wow, I don't know half the stuff that's going on here. But it's not. just so, it's so, it just makes you think about the mystery and magic of the world. And, you know, that's what Star Trek did for me. And, you know, a little bit, though I didn't like it as much, Star Wars. And, right. well, obviously that was more programming. But do you think Journey to the Center of the Earth would be programming as well, making us think that there are things down there? Why would could that be? be truth hidden in? Yeah, yeah, in truth hid, hidden in plain sight. I mean, you're talking about uh, a concept which is very, very plausible. We know this now. You do not need that big of a cavern to to pull that off. You know, they didn't talk about how high the ceilings were, but remember, our our airlines here cap out at ten miles. So even if you had a cavern that was half that high. You you know, with miles long, you could fit a full blown civilization. Look at look how many people we can we can cram into. Look, New York City, Manhattan. How many people we can cram into that a little area? I grant it takes a lot of resources to to power it, but it can be done. Hmm. But we've got a lot of people in the chat now talking about well everything we were just touching on dinosaurs and uh, Sasquatch and interesting. Um, somebody in here who I've not met before. Hello, I think I'm turning Japanese is the name of the user name, and I remember that song from the '80s. Do you remember the name? I mean, you mean do you remember the, the, the song? band or the song? I'm the turning Japanese. Oh yes, I'm turning Japanese. I really think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this person says the Bible says the sky will be rolled up like a scroll. Maybe at that point we will see. Oops, I just rolled off the screen here. It's very biblical, uh, by the way. Beyond Antarctica with New Jerusalem coming out of the sky. Sure. Sure. I mean, most, remember, it, not, not to get all biblical here, but the Bible is a flat earth book, plain and simple. Any pastor that tells you different is holding on to one verse and one verse only. That is Isaiah 40, 22, he who sit upon the circle of the earth, not mm -hmm. ball, not globe, not sphere, circle. And they're, they're using that verse as veto power over everything else. There is not a single other line in the Bible. that. But the word talks. circle is said later on in the Bible or earlier in the Bible. And I think it's the word chud or something along those lines um, for, or for, um, for uh, like a rock or something like that. Sure. So uh, it, it's a circle doesn't mean a sphere. No, if, no, if no. Ball, that's that's yeah. You break. A throwing it. ball is used, and as the word "chud" earlier. Rob, Rob Skiba is will absolutely enthusiastically go after that one because he hears it all the time. In fact, yes. I'm pretty sure that Robertson Genis, you know, that 700 page opus that he wrote against us, "Flat Earth, Flat Wrong." Uh, you know. Still don't like that title. Well, it's, it's because he's going after us and yet jump jumping on our bandwagon against catchy. us. Yeah, 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 but he's. I think chapter one is Isaiah forty twenty two. 
You know, that's that's that is the so, only thing they have to stand on. They have to right. build their defense around it. So he takes that and goes right in, right at the top, right to the top with that one as yeah. his opening. Yeah, well, you have to. If if you're if you're going to defend the Bible, you have to use Isaiah forty twenty two. You have to do it. And if you're going to do it from from the science side, if you're going to do it anti-flat earth, it's the only thing you got. And I, I challenge, you know, which is why I've made in the clues. How's the Tower of Babel work? How does the story of Joshua work? How does any of the other verses work? And people will say those are just stories. That's what the <laughs> then, then you, would say. Then you're cherry picking. Right. Like, okay, so you can pick that, but you're going to ignore the other stuff? Because like, remember, the Tower of Babel, that's Genesis. He, he, not many people can go after Genesis, but whatever. Hmm. Anyway, so what else are they doing in there? Oh, I don't know. They're just being people with all sorts of interesting things that they're saying. And there's a slight amount of people, you know, <laughs> just being jerks. And then people being totally cool and people being just like a slice of life. The chat's a slice of life. So uh, hello to Joey Rocha. Oh, and Paula Knowledge Scavenger is here as well. And Joe Mama. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny Freeman is here too. And a Spherical Cow. Um, Leeds Rules, hello, who says, I'm not able to be active in the chat. But I'm listening to the show and thought I'd say hi. I appreciate you being here. You know and we haven't talked about yet. Oh, you, are, you off, are you off microphone? Uh, sorry. You can hear me though, right? Barely. Yeah, pretty well, pretty well. I'll, I'll just talk with Jerry Rocha, who's in the chat, who says, hello, he's banned from Facebook and YouTube videos for now. Chihu from Hawaii. Joey, what did you do? Or what are they accusing you of doing? It's not really what. I, I should probably bring up this news story because that way people will stop sending it to me. This just in. This just <laughs> This a roving here. reporter just out of side of Seattle. Patricia, Mark. can you hear me? <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. <laughs> it's really snowing out here. <laughs> Can't see much. It's a really awful and then assignment. Like a backdrop of snow, but the camera pulls away, and it's just you on a building, and there's actually palm trees behind you. <laughs> just a little screen of snow. <laughs> We've lost three rescuers already. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me. And they're only showing close crop of you wearing like uh, a, a parka and mittens and you're shivering. But then when they pull away with the camera, you're wearing shorts and flip flops. Right. Right. Hey, uh, which is I think is Matt Long's everyday wear. Mm -hmm. The the man does not, uh, not own a long pair of socks. I'm, I'm almost guaranteeing it. <laughs> or socks. Somebody get that man some socks. Stat. It's summer okay. and he lives in Texas. What? He doesn't. He does it because it's cool. Mm. He's got this look. He's got this whole thing and the the really really short socks. That's part of it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep picking on him. Sorry. You it's, know, when people talk about other people, that means that they are interested in them. So. <laughs> really. <laughs> really, you're just gonna give. I it don't away. mean that way. But <laughs> how else you could? How else do you want to say it? That's fine. That's that's good. Oh, you know how I said chug before? You said well, chud. Or chud. That's right. I did say chud. Well, just Jack Flat Earth says it's chug and pronounced hug. Hug. Yeah, H-H-O-G. Yeah. Chud is an uh, underground civilization similar to the Morlocks. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, so the story I want to mention, because everyone keeps sending it to me, and you probably heard about it, is astronaut Rob Kulin quits NASA training a first in 50 years. Now, that is an interesting story. Did you did you know about this? No, but I haven't even read the story. But, you know, from what we all know about NASA, probably they told him to do that because he's he's now quit, which means if he had anything to tell, he'd tell it. But, of right. course, it's all fake and staged so that he won't be saying anything because he never really did quit because once you get in, you never get out. Yeah, it's an it's an odd little story because there's no there's it's no reason for them to release the whole myth of space. It's kind yeah, of it's it's another space drumbeat, but it's a it's a it's a clever one because one, if a guy quits NASA, you're not going to publicize it because it makes your organization, you know, it, it doesn't bode well for your group. But in and, and the other part is uh wait, out of the 500 guys that supposedly have have made it through this process and become astronauts, this is the only guy that quit for whatever reason? Nobody Actually, else. What I heard was 
he didn't like the harnesses. They were too tight. Uh, right. And he didn't like not being able to wear shoes because he's got foot odor. And, you know, when he's on the ISS, they make you just wear socks. And it was quite embarrassing. So he we should just spread the rumor that he <laughs> became a flat earther and he couldn't, for moral reasons, continue with the program. Wow. That's a good rumor. Let's spread right. it. So spread it around, guys. The Robert Kulin is secretly a, sorry, Rob Kulin. R O B B K U L I N is secretly a flat earther. Go ahead and tweet that. And <laughs> this is funny. Uh, the the person I think I'm turning Japanese says, "I heard he was afraid of water." <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> That's good. You know, the underwater pool. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. The yeah. Space if blocks, you're not, the if you, very very possible. If you had to do the underwater training. It's weird because you'd think that astronauts, because they have to do underwater training, would be start out as Navy SEALs, but they all start out as pilots because they're Air Force. Because mm -hmm. you have to fly stuff and see, but SEALs are more in tune with the whole water thing. Kind of a weird mix. So you're asking Air Force guys, oh yeah, get in the scuba suit. It's like, why? Because <laughs> you're training. <laughs> huh? <laughs> what? I don't think when you get that far, you ask why, you just do. Yeah. You, it's a... How dig do I? How do uh, yeah? I because you're not a new recruit. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That is a Just common, to. common overlooked thing, which is astronaut recruits are not rookies. They are veteran Air Force people. To when they when they get out of NASA, they're usually full bird colonels, and that's that's pretty high up there. Hmm. Why is it that the astronauts of yesterday were very fit looking, and the astronauts of today are not? Is that, I mean, we know, uh, you know, we different program, different, different standards. You don't have to hire the best of the best anymore. You don't have to do, if you Just, remember the right stuff from 1983, where it was literally a hero's program with the competition was fierce and these guys were all top of everything. And now you don't you don't have to you don't have to have the standards that high anymore you can just yeah just fine it would you know are you willing to sign this and not you know do whatever we say and shut up and not talk to the media you know only when we yeah sure you're in do you have you know they do a psychological profile now and as long as they can follow orders that's what you go with that's pretty much all it is isn't it yeah I remember a few years back, they did a news story about police officers and how there was an IQ test, but they didn't want their IQs to be too high in order to be hired as police officers. Hmm. And maybe it's something along those lines. Maybe. They, they, they profile the astronaut candidates and make sure that they, they're order followers. They psychologically profile them to make sure they're not rebels. Yeah. Meaning none of us here, had we even gone through that sort of training uh, to get to the point where you might be selected and then be let in on the secret that it's all a lie. Right, right. None of us would have would have made that cut because we're not order followers. We do. There was a great line uh, from a movie, Gross Point Blank, where when they when they do psychological profiling to be recruited into black ops, and spy programs and stuff like that. The line was that that they were determined to have a certain moral flexibility, and that is, does the end justify the means? Could you go out and do horrible things if, at the end of the day, you accomplish the goal for God and country? And that's what spies and black programs are all about. Well, so you always hear those kinds of stories, or. A challenge question that you're asked if you if it's the end of the world and you're in a large group of people who are the survivors and there's 50 of you but somebody um is has a limp what do you do right. and it's that greater good kind of question yeah. they and they do that to look at the survival of the group yeah i mean think think about sometimes the, and this goes beyond not to go into a dark corner but the whole battlefield triage thing Right. Which is, yeah. look, we can't, you're, you're slowing us up. You got to either, you, you stay here and make a stand because you're not going to, you know, the, the needs of the many. And in movies, somebody always says, no, go, go without me. Yeah. I'd be the one just like getting that person, getting him to walk or, you know, we're taking you with us regardless. Well, in which case the officer would say to you, fine, you stay with him. We're going. Right. Because you, even you would not be able to helping him would not be able to get him fast enough and say, fine, you want to help him? Yeah. Help him. But 
I hate those sorts of uh, thought, uh, what are they called? Tough, the tough choices. The tough choices like that. Yeah. Because I'm too, I'm too soft for that. Although I understand the greater good mentality. I just, mm. I, I hope I never have to make that sort of decision. Yeah. So, yeah. hi to Mark Ofsky and uh, Dopam Wani, any. <laughs> good shasta patriot alliance is in the live chat and um zulu one uh zulu i needed to ask you a question um did yes. he actually put up the thing from last night yeah. yes yeah okay so for those who don't know you're on truth frequency radio on tuesdays and also on tuesdays zulu one puts up the whole live tfr show on his channel and then it creates a nice little chat for us to visit right um and of course, he plays all the uh, the, the commercials from uh, right. TFR, so it's not like TFR is getting ripped off in any way at all. No. Um, and it's not making Zulu One any money, so it's just an alternative to going outside of the YouTube format and then listening to it. Anyway, uh, I noticed that, I, although I was in the live chat last night on Zulu One's channel listening to your TFR show, I looked today and it was gone. So I was asking, what happened? Where is it? Did someone make you take it down? Hey, maybe it's just lost in the shuffle. Hmm. He doesn't have that many subs yet, so maybe it just has Yeah, he does. Well, I think something happened to it. Yeah, maybe. We'll, we'll find out. Somebody ask him. I guess. I don't know. Hey, there was one more article I wanted to mention real quick, which was on the news. It was a smaller article, but I, the, the Christian community is going to appreciate this one. It is by the, It's from the Minnesota newspaper. Uh, and it is from the pulpit. Is the Flatter Society growing? And it was done four days ago. The flatter Society is the flat. Yeah, I know. It's because they don't they don't uh, know the term, and, and you know, sometimes we can get to correct them and and have them do stuff. And other so times they say it so fast, there's no way to correct them. Yeah, and it would also make people think it was weird when somebody's be interviewing you and they'll say, uh, "Patricia, tell us about what the Flat Earth Society does," and you're like, "I'm not in the Flat Earth Society." Is it? hard thing to say although you should right away because most people don't understand the different gr gradients when it comes to flat earth you know i just i didn't tell you this well I, I told you the first part which i was just i just did an interview yesterday from canadian geographic which i did not even know was a canadian thing canadian geographic I, I know right you know we always heard of american Ge or i'm sorry national, national. Geographic, national geographic but apparently there's a canadian version sort of like canadian vice is that like international geographic uh, I, I, look, I don't know how, what the naming scheme is for all the other countries, but this one's called Canadian Geographic is directly related. And he was he was mentioning the reason why I mentioned this is because he had talked to a representative from the Flatter Society, one of the Flatter Societies and there asked are him, real people. Yeah. Yeah. He asked. He, he got a hold of someone was asking them their comment, you know, wanted to, them to comment on our reactions and us saying that the Flyer Society is um, irrelevant and government sponsored and all this other stuff. And after a while, the, the guy he was talking to got really irritated and retracted him even allowing to publish comments on it. He says, you know what? I guess I, I don't want to uh, I don't want to have anything on record. And Did he say it. anything as to where he's been and his group has been during this entire? Uh, nope, feed? nope. But but where what, their videos are and the fact that he declined to comment said where's volumes. Where's their street activism? I, what it's what I told this guy. Remember, I had a guy from one of the flatter societies. I mean, there's a couple floating around out there, and one of the guys had contacted me what at least a year ago. Yeah, one followed me on Twitter for a while. And he called me and I, and he goes, Hey, I'd like to, you know, we'd like to support, you know, the, what can we do to, to help the, the cause? I'm going, no offense, man, but it's a little late <laughs> for you to do anything at this point. We, we don't need you anymore. We, in fact, we've never needed you. So you can just keep doing whatever well, exactly you were doing. The thing is, is that the flatter society, if it's a real thing with real people, which I really don't know, um, I think it's. I, well, you know, they could they could start making videos. They could start right. helping. They could start coming to meetups. The, the question the question is if they really did care. I mean, at 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 
best case scenario, they were just people that were were indifferent to everything. You know, they were just kind of coasting their way, and then flat Earth really wasn't a big part of their lives. At worst, they're you know a government backed organization. Do they really believe that Earth going upwards to account for gravity thing? All of them? I don't. I don't think so. I really don't think so. I think that's like like anything in our our community. It's a it's. It's not accepted by the majority, but when the when the press latch onto something, they oh, yeah. latch onto the most sensational. And that right, is, like we've one got guy all say, different things. We've got one guy that said we've got guys, enclosed world. We've got three suns. Australia we've got doesn't exist. Portals. Remember, remember yeah. that one, or the guy oh, yeah. that says, "Oh yeah, Australia doesn't exist," and pff, everyone. Or not to pick the Pac Man map. Yes. Oh, that made a little bit of a press, you know, impact. The thing is, is that we don't know what it is, but we know what it isn't. It, that's a what globe. I told them. <laughs> I told him, I said, at, I go, everybody's on the same page about one thing and one thing only, and that is it's not a globe. And he goes, 100%. And I go, 100%. I go, nobody is going to go back and, bro, you know, give a big bear hug to the globe. You know, they're, they're not going to do it. You can't put your arms around a fantasy. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> 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 Although I've tried. And if this was a drinking <laughs> show, <laughs> I would probably correct you there. But I'm not going to for decorum's sake. We need to do another drinking show soon. Yeah, maybe next week. That's when the truth know. comes out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you another thing. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say hello to Stiggy Van Skrinskeen. Very hard last name to say. Hello to Caroline Walter, F-E-A-Z, Chick. And Oliver Carrera says, uh, Mark, is that a hologram <laughs> that you're what wearing? <laughs> yeah. No. No, it is a real, it's a real hat by, built by Chris Pontius at flatearthmodels.com. It used to have a beanie top to it <laughs> with a Velcro that was stuck to it. In fact, I've still got the Velcro patch up there. It's, it's, it's on there. Hello. But, and it's powered. Yeah. Here's here. It, it can plug. It's USB powered, and I have it plugged into one of those phone extenders. Ah. These little phone extenders. Bipolar there. Flat Earth is in the chat too. I don't know if I said hi to you before. And Lee Redpath and David Romero and um, Lady Onyx says, "Did someone say drinking show?" <laughs> and hello to Walter Williams, who says, "Globe folks, Big Bang or black hole?" He's trying to get some kind of, you know conversation going flat Big earthers do not hole? drink absolutely like, flat earthers do not drink by michael cooley oh come on some do some don't just like everything in flat earth we've got everything we've got yeah, every was, age we've got every every we got everything yeah you go to raleigh or look at the tapes from raleigh talk to anyone that went went to but raleigh. there was people there were people they're not drinking right there's everything. And that's the great thing about Flat Earth. It's not like one of those carnival rides where it says you must be this tall to ride. This right. is, we. It, it's everyone. Anyone whose mind has been open to this and had that aha moment be, and becomes a Flat Earther is a Flat Earther. And the yeah. cool thing is, is that for the most part, the rest of the Flat Earthers are all cool with that. Welcome is what we say. Then there's some that are, well, we don't need to talk about them. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I think, oh, hello to Suzette Ann. Hi. Uh, I think we're done with our show. Are we done with our show? Unless anyone else has anything to chime in about that we may have missed. Mm. We're kind of in the uh, lull, current lull before the giant flatter storm, which will be known as Denver. Well, that'll be great. And in the description box of this video will be, until Denver happens, a link to get your tickets to the conference if you've not already got them. Yeah. Oh, hello to Jose J.G. Gonzalez as well, who just popped in. And hey, Stephen Chess, haven't seen you yet today. Nathan Fowler says that we should do a call-in show. And hello to Peanuts Clark. Peanuts is asking, is Jaren's test still tomorrow? Now, Oh, I forgot to mention Jaren's test. Oh my gosh, good thing you said that. Um, Jaren is doing a test, and I'm not sure if it is tomorrow. Somebody in the live chat let me know. Um, bipolar Flat Earth is going to go down with Wendell, and they are going to assist Jaren with another laser test. Cool. That could be tomorrow. I don't know, but we will be uh, checking Jaren's channel out to find out more information on that. Anyway, as uh, we continue all flat earthing together in our own individual way, I encourage you to support your fellow flat earther, even if you have a different belief than they do, even if some of their beliefs make you mad. 
as long as they're cool with you, you can be cool with them. And if there are people that you deal with on the flat earth who are flat earthers who aren't that nice, my suggestion is to just walk on by, uh, let them do their thing. No need to really fight. I think all the fighting creates a rise in cortisol in the human body. Look it up. And that can create actual disease happening inside you, sickness. And we don't need sick flat earthers. We need everybody healthy and, and, and ready to, to tackle this ball and deflate it. All right. I guess that's it for now. Cool. Cool. Until okay. we meet again. <laughs> so let's keep it flat. I guess. Uh, yeah. Keep it flat and give the video a thumbs up and like and sub and share and all share that stuff. And is that it? Yeah, we're done. Keep it flat. Bye. Hail Hydra. George Clooney. Woo.